and welcome to another video review from AV Forums. I'm Phil Hinton, I'm the editor and I have been since 2003. I'm also a fully trained and qualified ISF and THX audio and video calibrator with 16 years of experience. In today's video we're looking at the new flagship AV receiver from Yamaha, the RXA3080. So let's get straight into the review and look at the design first. So as not to waste any time and beat around the bush, the design of the A3080 has been around for at least the last 5 years and it's had no major changes around the front to the port. It is a nice design with a glass section to the top of the front plate which houses the central large display with power, AI light and pure direct buttons placed either side of this. To the bottom left is the input selector knob and to the right side is a large volume dial. In the middle of these is a large metal flap that covers over more connections and menu buttons. The chassis of the A3080 is made from metal and well screwed together with an excellent level of build quality. The front face is aluminium which helps with adding a nice rigid feel to the unit. It also features the anti-resonance technology or ART wedge which is a fifth foot in the centre of the unit that's designed to dampen vibrations from the power transformer and elsewhere. The A3080 is available in this black finish here or the lighter titanium silver finish and around the back are the connections. For new users, the rear end of the Yamaha A3080 may be a daunting sight with all its connections and binding posts. However, it is logically laid out with each type of connection placed within an area of similar type. So all the HDMI ports are to the top. Component video is below these with analog inputs to the section to the left rear side and pre-outs to the right. Network and control are placed to the top right with digital and XLR connections to the bottom left and the speaker binding post take up the rest of the back panel. The layout is logical enough but it's not colour coded like the Denon approach so some care is still required to make sure you wire up your speakers correctly. Moving back to the top of the connections we have the 7 HDMI inputs and 3 outputs. These are all HD CP 2.2 compliant and full bandwidth 18 gigabits per second with support for 4K 444 60p signals and HDR10, Dolby Vision and HLG pass through. The three outputs can be designated to separate displays in either the same room or a separate room for zone 2 and you can watch different content as well. ARC is available on output 1. Below the HDMI ports are four composite and two component inputs, each having their own assignable audio inputs. We also have analog inputs for stereo devices and a dedicated phono input with ground for use with a turntable. Added to this are three optical and three coaxial digital inputs along with a balanced set of stereo XLR inputs which are unusual for an AVR of this level but are probably here for use with Yamaha's own disc player. Finally in this section of the rear is the DAB and FM antenna and moving to the top right of the receiver we find the control section with an RJ45 network port, two 12 volt triggers and IR in and out along with an RS232 control port. While the RX A3080 is only a 9 channel AVR it does have full 11.2 decoding and pre-outs so you can add a separate 2 channel amplifier or even do all your channels of amplification off board via the pre-outs. There are also balanced XLR outs for use with the front left and right channels into a balanced connection on a separate amplifier. Finally we have 11 sets of binding posts which will accept bare wire and banana plugs for all channels. These are not laid out in the logical manner you would expect so make sure you can clearly see which channel is which when you're wiring up your system. Finally, Yamaha has seen fit to provide the 2019 Avantage range with all new remote controls and it's almost perfect. Gone are the hundreds of small fiddly buttons that made everything overly complicated to use and in comes a rubberized feel with slightly raised buttons for main controls only. This is the one thing that we're not sure of as the buttons are not raised enough to make it simple to know which key is which in the dark without looking down. You know, muscle memory is important when it comes to using AV kit in the dark. 
The remote is backlit and it comes on every time you pick it up. The most used keys are positioned to the centre of the remote body with the directional and enter keys. Setting list and back keys are also here and use icons instead of lettering to tell you what they are. Below these are small home, top menu and pop-up buttons for use with a player and below these are the program rockers and volume controls. Small keys between these are used for the AI, surround decoder and enhancer and mute is a small key under the volume rocker and straight mode is under the program rocker. At the top of the remote are 8 keys you can assign as scenes along with source input selection keys and direct access for tuner, net, USB and Bluetooth connections. Overall it's a welcome addition to the AVR range and a huge improvement over what was offered with previous generations. The slight issue with the small rise in the rubberized buttons is something we did get used to over our months of long term testing with the A3080. The A3080 is a 9.2 channel AV receiver so you can have 7.2.2 Atmos setup using the provided amplification or a 7.2.4 setup by adding a separate 2 channel power amp. It has 11.2 decoding built in along with the usual suite of Yamaha DSP sound fields for you to play around with. In terms of power, Yamaha don't divulge all channels driven data but with two 8 ohm channels driven you'll see around 150 watts per channel according to Yamaha's own figures. In testing we had no issues with the power on tap for all types of content using our MNK MP300 4 ohm reference system speakers. The Cinema DSP HD3 processing also works alongside Dolby Atmos and DTS-X immersive formats adding extra presence and width to those formats. New for 2019 in terms of features is the Surround AI which Yamaha claims uses machine learning and artificial intelligence to create the optimal surround experience for individual content types. This AI instantaneously analyses scenes and focuses on distinct sound elements such as dialogue, background music, ambient sounds and sound effects to automatically optimise the surround effect in real time. When switching to surround AI there is a small AI logo which lights up just left of the main display. Yamaha has always put the quality of its DAX at the centre of their high end products performance and there's no difference here with the use of ESS Sabre Pro ES9026 Pro Ultra DAC for the main channels and Sabre ES9007S DACs for the presence channels. These use technologies to reduce noise and ground effects giving the A3080 clean and crisp sound quality from all sources. YPAO RSC which stands for Reflective Sound Control analyses your room acoustics with the included microphone to automatically adjust the audio to fit with your room's acoustics. It employs RSC to correct early reflections and YPO 3D provides automatic surround parameter optimization that maximizes the 3D sound field with Cinema DSP HD3 as well as Dolby Atmos and DTSX. The system uses 64 bit high precision EQ calculation to reach its results. While we found it gave us the same results that we achieved with the traditional pink noise and SPL meter approach, the base results are again the weak point for us with the YAPO system which lags behind the likes of Odyssey and Dirac for outright performance. With the A3080's wireless system it's also possible to use music cast speakers like the 20 and 50 to be the wireless rear speakers in your system. Music cast can also be used as a multi-channel music system for your home with the A3080 as its hub. Plus the AVR has all the major streaming services built in and syncing your accounts and playlists is incredibly easy. The A3080 can also be controlled with the AV controller app available for mobile and tablet use as well as full voice integration with Alexa on music cast. One of our longest running complaints with recent Yamaha AV receivers has been the dated looking menus which thankfully on the A3080 have been given a refresh in terms of the design. Everything now looks and feels contemporary with a traditional list to the left which opens up to provide more detailed levels of the menu to the right side of the screen. Here you can set up speaker systems and patterns along with assigning the power amplifiers depending on your speaker arrangement. 
You can manually set up the distance, levels and crossovers as well as use the EQ and test tone built in. You need to connect the microphone for the full YPAO setup procedure. As you can see, it is possible to dig down deep into the menu system and make all sorts of adjustments to performance, which is great for a die-hard AV enthusiast, but at the same time the menus could be incredibly daunting for those less experienced with such a setup and system. As such, even after the designer facelift, we find the A3080 menu system to be a tad intense and not as user-friendly and accommodating as some of the competition out there. But you can't argue with the flexibility on offer during setup and almost everything the Yamaha can do is adjustable in some way. Just like the A3060 and A3070 that have gone before, the Yamaha RX A3080 is capable of producing a highly dynamic and assured performance over a wide variety of soundtracks and genres. It didn't struggle at any point driving our reference MK MP300 system and its 4 ohm load, retaining a nice headroom at sensible volume levels for fast moving transients. Driving straight into Dolby Atmos, the opening number from Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is dealt with easily. There is a nice sense of weight to the surround mix with excellent musicality and bass performance for the LEO track playing, as well as superb effect placement as the fight with the interdimensional beast carries on in the background. Dialogue remains tight and intelligible within all the chaos. Then, sliding swiftly to a more relaxed jazz-filled soundscape in La La Land, the Yamaha manages again to produce a fantastically believable soundstage with sweeping strings playing loud, but never sibilant, and brass instruments feel real and lifelike. Obviously, Yamaha make musical instruments, so it is reassuring that their AVRs can play them back well enough to sound realistic. The world of pan is also brought to life with superb sound effects and music panning, while dialogue again remains natural and central. Adding in the various DSP effects for movies did nothing for us at all. We found the original sound mix to be good enough in all cases, but if you do like the effects of DSP, you'll be kept fully entertained with what the Yamaha can offer you. We found the same to be true with Surround AI and what it brings to existing soundtracks. It is possible to hear the widening of the soundstage and more obvious placement of effects around the room with AI engaged, and we're sure some users will really like this effect. But for us, we again felt that the filmmakers are best at deciding how a scene is supposed to play out effects-wise and as such prefer to bypass the AI. But again, this will come down to personal preference. There is no doubt though that even with all the DSP and AI switched off, the Yamaha is still capable of excellent dynamics, surround effects placement and musicality, and while not a giant leap forward compared to previous year's products, it still sounds fantastic. There is no doubt that the Yamaha RX A3080 is a great AV receiver with enough power to drive a large home cinema system to reference levels. It has up-to-date HDMI inputs that can handle everything currently available except HDR10+, it has excellent 11.2 decoding and the ability to expand the system for a full 7.2.4 Dolby Atmos as well as some neat DSP effects and the new surround AI. However, much of the DSP and AI is only really worth it if the listener is going to use it. As AV purists here at AV Forums, we didn't really find anything useful with the DSP effects or the AI features, but of course, it comes down to personal preference at the end of the day, but you are paying for these features. The RX A3080 is really just a slight improvement in features compared to the previous A3060 and A3070 models with the additional XLR pre-out the only major difference along with AI. If you own one of these previous models, we don't really think it is worth the upsell unless you really must have surround AI on your next receiver. It highlights the issues we have had for a number of years with all manufacturers determined to launch a new model every year, but with only token added features for the premium over the outgoing model. Unless you have an AVR that is close to 5 or more years of age, there is little incentive at the moment to upgrade unless your existing model is restricted in some way. 
Sound quality is just as good as the previous models, which again makes it difficult to recommend for those with slightly older Yamaha models. And as it stands at the price of £1,999 at the time of this review in June 2019, the Marantz SR7013 actually makes a good case for your upgrade money with the addition of Auro 3D and Odyssey Mult EQ X32 along with updated HDMI 4K HDR capability and all of this for almost £300 less than the A3080. However, having said all of that, if you do need a new up-to-date AV receiver with full 4K HDR pass-through and up-to-date codec support, the Yamaha A3080 is certainly an excellent AVR with superb sound quality out of the box. We we'll like the new remote control, which was long due a refresh, and the new menus look better but can still be a little daunting for some users. Ultimately, it will be up to you which AVR you finally pick, but the Yamaha is certainly still a flagship model and offers enough to get a highly recommended for what it offers in terms of sound quality, build quality and features. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then please like and subscribe, and why not click the notification bell to find out when our next review is available.